Is that gonna work for you? I don't have my glasses. Hey everyone, welcome back to the farm. It's Brad with Batchelder Family Farms. Out here uh, doing chores, just let the chickens out. Got a few things got to do today. Um, spent some time yesterday getting about half, actually my dad did it for me, uh, luckily. Big time saver, but got about half of our pasture fertilized. We're gonna go out today, get the other half fertilized. I'll take you along on that. Uh, gonna do some more work on the duck pen and uh, talk to you about a couple cool groups we've had uh, out this week to check out all of our animals in the farm out here so stick around if you haven't yet go and subscribe to our channel give us a thumbs up and ring that notification bell whoa easy all of our chickens just found out the other day when I came down to close them up with Jenna at night that we have 43, 43 chickens. But our favorite chicken here, Miss Maddie, has uh, been sitting on a nest for a few days and she has a bunch of eggs under her. I know, mama, I know. And we even put some duck eggs under her so we've got four or five chicken eggs a few duck eggs and uh, we'll let her sit on those she is our best mama she is hatched man you guys have been busy this morning she is hatched oh boy i don't know four litters of four litters or she's hatched uh baby chicks four or five times i think so uh she loves doing it she's great at it we've never had to help um couple other times that she set we've taken the eggs from her pretty early and put live baby chicks and she's raised those so she has more than earned her keep around here I have some leftover hard-boiled eggs from Easter threw them in here with the pigs and don't worry that's just food coloring on the egg uh, so it's nothing that's gonna be harmful to them I didn't know if the chickens or the pigs would eat it, and as soon as I threw them, Spike is devouring it. Brick has already eaten too. Oh, sorry buddy. Watch out, chicken. I don't know if you <laughs> want to get that close. Well, I guess pigs like Easter eggs too. Is that good, bud? Guess uh, they don't like that one. What do you think, big guy? Hmm? Oh, bless you. <laughs> you better eat it. Down here at the duck pen, kind of walk you through the next steps of what I'm going to do to kind of secure, to try to secure it, and uh, hopefully make some progress on that today. Here's our original chicken pen. Um, we initially just let our chickens free range all the time, and they would go down to this field right here. And the first year we had them, we quickly learned that the fall and chickens, um, Free ranging is not a great time because they got attacked by some coyotes and we lost a bunch of them. So the, right after that, I built this pin and uh, it's eight foot wide, it's 16 feet long, and it is a four foot section of hardware cloth and then another four foot section. And then it's all stapled in um, where they overlap on the two by sixes. So kind of, kind of take that same idea here. I'm going to start with putting the two by six across the bottoms all the way around. What that's going to allow me to do is get the measurement that I want, make sure everything is 
how I want it and then I will uh, so if it's exactly 10 feet then I'll make sure these are squared all the way around um, at exactly 10 feet or whatever that distance is so I'm gonna have to make a lot of cuts post to post but whenever I'm done it should be extremely secure and hopefully no critters are able to get in and uh, get our ducks whenever we move them in here hey buddy in here with Tricky and the donkeys got this mineral um, I don't even know some kind of mineral for horses and donkeys and ponies mini horse I've got it in Buck and Elsa's pen I've had it there for a few days and they've done really well they really like it and I've had it in these guys's pen but every time I come in here they get it knocked off so I'm gonna try again to rehang it and tie it on um, so hopefully hopefully that means they're eating it yeah you like that and that's why they're messing with it or that's why it's coming off and they're not just messing with it we'll see All right is that gonna work for you don't have my glasses so we've got it on the rope tied up tight big knot on the bottom so it can't slide through they can knock it up and down a little bit hopefully they're liking it i don't know Tractor's all hooked up. This is the buggy of fertilizer. It's a 50-20-20 blend, more for maintenance, um, but uh, something we use typically every other year. We'll put a maintenance on, and then the next year we'll uh, we'll put something a little heavier on. I didn't get to fur, or I didn't get to check my pastures, so um, I should really do that in February so I can get that back, but. Here's the buggy, all filled with fertilizer. Dad's gonna run it again, so I'm going to get some uh, footage of him spreading it and get our fields fertilized. So, there's a little conveyor belt, and you can kind of see it. Uh, whenever he puts this little wheel down that's between these two big tires, it'll run that conveyor belt. That'll feed the fertilizer onto the spreader. And when it starts throwing fertilizer, it's a 50 foot spreader, so it'll throw fertilizer 25 feet on each side. We try to overlap it a little bit, go about 20, 22 feet on our pass, and then just that way everything gets a nice thick coverage. Let's see if I can zoom in more. You can see the fertilizer being spread. This is actually our neighbor's property. Uh, we cut hay off of their property, so I fertilize it. Um, just right thing to do, I think. And uh, there'll actually be a fence that goes right here. It'll be part of the pipe fence. We've got it down this weekend. We should get more fence up and uh, be real close to letting the bison out here. But. My dad will fertilize all this. Probably got a couple hours of fertilizing today. I really appreciate that because that saves me time. It's going to allow me to go back, work our store, and work on the duck pen, and hopefully get that stuff done. Bison nap time. Enjoying the beautiful sun. A nice April day. Three of the new ones that we just brought home a few weeks ago. Doing well in here with Chief and Phyllis. We've got the others here. There's Ashley. Hopefully calving in the next 
60 days or less. Well, what are you doing? You never get this close to me. Let's see if you keep following me. I walked down here from the barn and she just kept following me. She has not done that before. Definitely starting to get a little more used to us. You're too used to us. She's starting to get, these horns are starting to become a problem. I was in there with her earlier today and she put them right on me. Is that just because you're getting ready to have a baby? I don't know how close she is, but she is getting, I mean, I would say in the next few weeks, if not earlier. What do you think, Doris? Not much to say? Well, along with the duck pen, I've been doing a little bit of work on their pen because we're dividing it because they're going to have a couple guests here pretty soon. Um, not going to say what it is yet. We're pretty excited about getting them but they're gonna have a uh, couple of really close roommates. Think you guys can handle that? All right, now I'm walking back towards the barn. Let's see if she'll keep following me. <laughs> Ashley, what are we doing? closer than we've gotten to her yet. She's getting used to us. The art of escaping starts at a young age. Just watched our black white face heifer walk right underneath the hot wire fence and is now out. Luckily she's not going to leave her mom very far and she'll go back. But it's amazing how early they start wondering. Finished with the neighbors now. Uh, he's working here just east of the creek where we do a lot of the winter stuff for the cows. And then he'll cross the creek and finish uh, where he ended yesterday. The question we get is why do we fertilize? Um, you know, we ask a lot from our ground, our soil, our grasses. And this is the best way we have to put something back in though. Um, to keep them healthy so we can keep the cows healthy so we can raise good quality meat. In 2022 was the first time that I didn't fertilize since we've been here. Uh, we bought the place in 2015. We fertilized every year. And we didn't fertilize in 2022 because prices just skyrocketed with fertilizer. So I didn't think we could afford to fertilize. And what I quickly found out is it almost cost us dearly to not fertilize. Um, we had to drastically reduce our herd size, spend a lot more money on hay because we didn't have the good quality grass to support them. And these animals, while we hay them in the winter, they thrive on grass. They survive on hay and they thrive on grass. So after, uh, after that year, I said, I will never again not fertilize my land. And even though prices are much higher than they were pre-pandemic, it's worth every penny to fertilize. And it's worth even more if you can get your dad to fertilize for you. So that's a huge time saver. Got the first couple boards cut here. And amazingly, everything lined up how I'd hoped. Um, I have the board here that's on the east side. It'll be in the middle to this post. And then it just overlaps on this side. Just uh, 
cover up the the corner there but I'll get those attached and then I'll move around to the other corner over there here is my theory so I've got this corner on and across the front here same over there and if you want to get in here and look really close and you can see there's like gaps in these boards that's because these are all leftover boards that we've had out here for a year two years however long so they've warped can't take them back it's a duck pen it's not our house it's not a structure we're going to live in it's going to be perfectly fine it's just not going to look as pretty as a nice straight board but back to my theory so all the posts are in concrete i've still got to do this section right here and i'll measure that off then in theory i should be able to cut two more boards for each post going up and that is going to allow everything to be the exact same distance on the bottom middle and top i don't know if that'll work out exactly or not but that's the theory i'm going with jenna just brought owen home and he wants to go ride in the tractor with his papa so we're heading out right now but i wanted to get down here so you can see what the fertilizer looks like when it spreads uh, this is an area that is all dirt right now because it's where we drive a lot so it doesn't get much grass but you can really see what that fertilizer looks like so next time it rains the cows will walk on it that soil will soften up and that will get down into the soil and replenish many nutrients that are missing looks like he might be getting close to the end checking to see how many grain or how many grains how many how much fertilizers left got any left got any left in there somebody wants to ride with you who do you think he saw your truck In the video um, the duck pen got quite a few boards on I will update that as we finish the duck pen uh, getting everything fertilized that is a huge help got to spend a lot of time with the animals today but I want to talk about a couple days this week I didn't record hey Phyllis I didn't record any of this but it was an awesome week here um, we had the group from the high school back out, the same students that have been coming. They came out, they were able to be outside. It was a little chilly, it was a little windy, but those kids got right into whatever chore we were doing, feeding the buffalo, the horses, the donkeys. Uh, they loved Larry the emu, the chickens, door start. They got right in, they fed all the animals. They were here for just over an hour, I think, maybe a little bit more. He said it was chilly that day, it was windy, but those kids still love to be here and are a big help uh, whenever they're here. That was a lot of fun. Then the next day, we had a group contact us, a group of homeschool students and uh, homeschool families, and asked if they could come out. And they brought, I think there were eight or nine kids. And... I had an absolute blast. They were here for almost two hours. They got those, and they were all boys, and there was one girl, and they got out of the car, and they just ran right over to Tricky and the donkeys, 
to the buffalo, started feeding them. They were very respectful kids and listened and, and just jumped right in and fed all of the animals, asked all sorts of questions. I think I, I know they had a good time and I think I enjoyed it more than them. And that's just it's such a blessing for us to be able to do that, to be able to share our love of animals and the animals uh, with other people. So really appreciate those groups coming out. Hope you enjoyed the video today. Hope everyone stays well and we'll see you back here real soon.